Hello and welcome to Genealogy Gems podcast episode number 113. Before I let you go, I really want to talk with you about what I think you do so well, which is you're able to pull the, the, the solid research together, but you have found the emotional connections. You've conveyed the emotional connections. It had to have been challenging, not only just for you, but for your family members. And there are lots of people out there listening who are saying, I want to put it down, but I don't want it to be dry and just a pedigree chart. Uh, or I'm a little nervous about how my relatives are going to feel. Or the other question, and I'm just piling them on here because we're all wondering, how in the world did you draw so many wonderful stories out of people? You must have some tips up your sleeve as to what seemed to work well when you sat down with somebody and said, I'd like you to share with me, and I want to record it. And then, you know, the, the look is, oh, no, 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 I don't, I, don't, I don't remember anything, and, oh, I feel I don't want you to record anything. I sound weird. And, you know, how did you deal with um, the, the process of collecting the interviews, dealing with the emotions of the people who knew you were going to publish this, and then to finally feel like you could convey it in a way that spoke to somebody outside of your family? How's that for a whopper of a three-layer question? Okay, it is three layers. I think I have three answers. One has to do with an outline. Mm -hmm. One has to do with talking uh, in my family. Um, and the third has to do with questions that I asked. Yes. Okay, outline, talking, and questions. Perfect. I'll try to address all three of those. Those okay. are the big questions on everybody's <laughs> mind who want to accomplish what you have. Okay, okay. Um, I had a hypothesis because of this multi-generational pattern I saw um, about the conflict between um, searching for your place as an individual mm -hmm. and yet finding your place in a larger community, right. family, society, community, church, band, so military. So that hypothesis, I can see what you're saying, because you mentioned that earlier. That gave you some focus, didn't it? It gave you some theme to work with. It gave me a okay. theme, and it gave me a starting point right from the bat of how I wanted to include and exclude mm -hmm. information. That is such a hard decision to make along the way. Wonderful. So the theme helped you, guide you. The theme guided me, and really the chapter titles guided me. Mm -hmm. I came up with a series of chapter titles specifically uh, chosen because they reflect both personal and national stories at the same time. Okay. So, for example, um, the first chapter is The Great War. Mm -hmm. Other chapter titles are Baby Boom, Riots, uh, The Women's Movement, Gay Liberation, right. um, on and on and on and on and on, Heartland. Mm -hmm. uh, so, whenever possible, uh, I was trying to find information about each person that could be uh, related to some kind of social or national drama. Mm -hmm. How they uh, fit into the context of their world, right? That's right, and and that 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 fit particularly with my um, uh, theme of how each person finds his or her role right. in a family or a community, uh, and and trying to give each person an opportunity to sort of own his or her chapter or a little sub-memoir within a larger memoir. Mm -hmm. And just for those of you listening, this is not just John's ancestors. This comes into modern day, which I love. It, it pulls the current day folks into this story and shows the connectedness. So I'm guessing you have this theme. You, you've got chapters that are kind of guiding you. That must have then stepped into the interviewing process of guiding you. Because, you know, it is. You, it's hard. You sit down and you have this blank slate. What are you going to talk? And, and you know you only have a limited amount of time with the people that you're interviewing. Did that then guide you in how you wanted to go and maybe pull some of the, the stories out? Yes, that goes to our third point about questions. Mm -hmm. um, I can talk really briefly about the second point oh, about sure. talking. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, one benefit that I have, one real huge advantage that I have, and that other friends have made very clear to me that I have, is that my family is very talkative. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> when it comes to this, yes. Yes. And so I, I grew up absorbing uh, an ongoing drama. Mm -hmm. It was just 
you know, soap opera from one day to the next. Um, it's part of, the, uh, it's the, the Italian part of the heritage, I suppose, stereotypically plays into that. Um, but the other advantage is that my family has only recently arrived in this country. You know, we don't go back to the Mayflower. Right. We don't go back to the Civil War. <laughs> we, exactly. we go back to the early 1900s. So the oral history can cover almost all of it. Um, and what can cover all of it is the stories that those elderly people still alive can mm -hmm. still pass down. So, you know, you've got to double check and triple check their stories, but right. the, the living the living memory is was still there for me to draw from. Um, so I had a head start in that way. I know some families just don't talk. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that is, I don't know how I would have mm -hmm. done this. I don't think I could have done this right. if I had been in that kind of a situation. Um, but the questions um, that fed into this outline of balancing the individual story with the national story, uh, there were uh, three or four questions that I asked all of the major characters. Okay. They were, if I can recall them, because this was an, an important part of the interview process that mm -hmm. I called the introspection. Sounds kind of like the inquisition, <laughs> yeah. the interrogation. But How did you feel about all that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but, but after getting the facts and figures and data yes. dates down, um, I asked three or four questions about reflection trying to get people to reflect. Um, a couple of them had to do with when in your life was it most difficult for you to be true to yourself? Mm. Okay. And a related question to that was, was, was there any uh, person or group or role model that had a particularly important influence on your life. Oh, okay. it, it could have been a, a college professor. It could have been a philosopher. It could have been a rock star. Who did you look to as someone who uh, you could identify with in a way that no one else you knew could identify with? I would imagine that's a very powerful question because sometimes it's hard to talk about how I characterize me, but if I can tell you who I'm looking at and identifying with and talk about them, I'll bet that just gave you so much insight into really the person who was t describing that person. Yes, yeah. in every area. I mean, from my brother, the, the baseball jock, who was the number one baseball player he identified with? Not the name of the player being important, but why mm -hmm. he identified with that particular approach to baseball oh, as being important right. and what that said about my brother's view of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything from baseball to theology to music and on and on, and politics and military history and every, every on and on. So that that is a way of getting people themselves to point out where they found themselves mm -hmm. in the larger society. Mm -hmm. um, the other angle, uh, again, I was trying to balance this tension. The other angle is when in your life did you most feel connected to something larger than yourself? Mm -hmm. Where you knew you fit. Where you knew you fit. So on the one hand, I was encouraging people to look inward right. to the core of their being. What really makes you tick? Who are you? What makes you unique? Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was asking people to force themselves to look beyond themselves. Where did you find yourself belonging to something bigger? Mm -hmm. And how does that reflect your personal story as well as your connection to everything else? Right. Yeah, it's interesting, particularly in today's world, it seems like more and more people are just inward focused, and yet your book makes it so abundantly clear that we are all connected, whether we know it or like it or not, that we're all products of what was going on around us. We all took it just a little bit differently. And uh, it was interesting you said you asked the question about 
being true to yourself. And I certainly picked that up in the story of the Italian family. And that was so important to them to know who they were, even in the face when the community they thought they were part of and very close to kind of turned. Mm -hmm. And they had to decide, do you you go along and appease these people or do you stay true? And in your family, it sounds like that's something, a theme that has been there. Did you discover that, that there was a lot of that? You're just going to, to find happiness, you just have to know what your compass is? You have to know what your compass is, but you also have to know when to... Um, put the brakes on your own reckless behavior. Yes, exactly. <laughs> reckless behavior that can be um, uh, damaging to your family, damaging mm-hmm. to your community. But I, I like what you said about uh, where we might be today with a lot of people being very inward focused. Uh, and I think that genealogy is exciting because it's not focused on just on the past. I mean, the reason why people, I think, are becoming more and more fascinated with genealogy, their own family genealogy as well as in general, is that history is moving so fast now, we're sort of spinning out of our our comfort zones, Mm -hmm. and the importance of knowing where we came from is not simply to get the facts down, but it's to help us make meaning uh, out of our own lives and come to a a richer understanding of how we can move forward. Thinking more about that, uh, when things are moving so fast, it is in our nature. We need to be connected. There's a sense of security that comes from that. And if sometimes if things are moving so fast forward, knowing there's a connectedness from behind can give us stability while we're embracing all of this change, whether it's good, bad, or in between. Yeah, you're shaking your head. Yes, I I hope that, uh, that those of you listening will check out this book. It's Oh Beautiful, An American Family in the 20th Century. And it really expresses, I think, the fact that our family history is yesterday's history and it's the future that's being created that is our future descendants' history. So um, don't forget to capture our own and I would say probably start talking to your siblings. It sounds like that was a really fascinating experience for you. Um, John, thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. Thank you. It's been a terrific pleasure. Thank you.